Here we go. Greetings, John here, and this time we're going to look at one of the best games on Xbox 360 and Bungie's final entry in the long-running Halo series, Halo Reach. It's a magnificent finale that perfectly captures the essence of Halo, with large environments, huge battles, and plenty of freedom resulting in some of the most exciting moments in the series. As Bungie's third Xbox 360 title, Reach also offers a number of technical improvements over the previous games. Screen resolution was improved, bumped up to 1152 by 720 from the much lower 640p of Halo 3. World detail was expanded with extra foliage and effects all throughout the world, and of course the number of on-screen foes was bumped up significantly. It was a better looking and better moving game. In fact, the underlying technology powering Reach served as the jumping off point for Bungie's next game, Destiny. Now, as nice as the game looked, it did suffer from some frame rate issues on original hardware, but the overall experience felt more consistent than Halo 3 overall. Most importantly, the frame pacing bug that persisted in both Halo 3 and ODST has been eliminated completely on 360. Plus, movement in general is much smoother thanks to the addition of object and camera motion blur, though the temporal anti-aliasing technique used here doesn't really hold up anymore with lots of visible ghosting artifacts present when objects pass too closely to the camera. Unfortunately, Halo Reach isn't quite ready for prime time when played on Xbox One. Throughout all of our testing across many different games, no other title could drop as low as Halo Reach. In its lowest moments, the game would drop all the way down into the low teens, resulting in a completely unplayable experience. It really doesn't work well at all, and probably shouldn't have been released in this state. That said, many of its most significant drops do seem to coincide with the loading of new data. But unlike some other games, this isn't a quick pause, rather a sustained drop that can persist for a good long while. Of course, even when the game is hitting 30 frames per second, the frame pacing is completely messed up now, giving the impression of a near constant judder. Seeing that this was fixed originally from Halo 3 to Reach when played on a real 360, seeing this problem return in full force on Xbox One, well, it's not very nice at all. Beyond that, texture streaming is sluggish, and the players often left with lower detail assets peppered around the environment. In the end, we were pretty disappointed by these results and feel that, in its current state, Halo Reach just isn't worth replaying on Xbox One. It's a shame, too, as it leaves a real hole in the franchise, as it's the one title that isn't natively available on the platform. So we certainly hope that these issues with the backwards compatibility feature can be ironed out this year, but really, we'd actually prefer a genuine port, as with the rest of the Master Chief Collection. Hey, one can dream, right? Anyways, that about wraps things up here. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos over on YouTube, and until next time, this is John signing off.